Hello and welcome to Infinity. When we take a picture with, we've got sky and land, um, the camera has a bit of a job figuring out what to expose for because the sky is usually much lighter and needs a different exposure. So we end up with something like this, which is kind of in the middle. The sky is it's a bit on the light side and the, the land's not great. It could do with a bit more in it. So let's try and select the sky. So what we could do, we could use the selection brush and so on and work around here and refine it and so on, but there's an easier way to do that. One way we can try, and sometimes this works, is we go to Levels and if we turn down the white, the sky gets lighter and lighter. But we have to keep going until the sky goes completely light to get the mask. But by the time we got down here, we got a whole bunch of white in the, in the land as well. So that's not much good. So what we can do is we can look at channels. And I should make sure we're selecting this. So now we've got, we just go to the composites. And if I go to red, then it shows just the red, uh, where white means lots of red and black means not much red. And if we're looking particularly around the sky here, yeah, that's okay. You've got some red, in it, of course, because it's RGB and it's, it's red and white. Click on the green. That's better. That's whiter because we'd like to get the sky as white as possible. But when we get to blue, that's the best of all. And surprising, it's the sky. There's blue in it. So now let's go back to that levels again. And now if I bring down the white, we very, very quickly get to the white, the sky being completely white, and there's very little down here. Particularly then if I bring the black up, it makes a lot of this black, and I bring it up so it's right next to the white. Don't go past because it'll invert. So there we go. Then what I can do is I go to the blue again, the composite blue. I right click on that and click on load to pixel selections. I could do other ways, but this way works just fine. So now I've got a selection and I'm selecting the sky. There's a bit down here in the land. So now I can go to the selection brush, go to subtract. Don't need snap to edges and I can paint over here to remove the selection. The white in it doesn't matter because I only want the selection. I'm taking the selection off from where I don't want it. So there we go. So now I want to get back to my original picture. So if I click on reset here, that gets all the channels going. It looks rather funny now. That's because I got the levels rather strangely, but I take that off. And now if I go back and hit adjustments and curves, it will put a mask on those curves, those curves there for the sky. So I can hit control D to get rid of the marching ants. And now when I move this, now I'm just changing the sky. So if I pull this down a bit here, there you go. That's a bit nicer sky, isn't it? I'll call that sky. Now what I can do is if I control J with duplicate layer, I get another layer here. The sky looks rather strange at the moment because it's doubling the effect. But if I hit control I, it inverts the mask. So no, the mask goes from up here to down here. And I can now look at this and set this however I want. And let's just make it a little bit more contrasty with a an S curve. There we go. So there we go. Very, very quick way of an easy way, an accurate way of selecting the sky and by inverting it, the land. And so we can improve our picture in no time flat without any of the faff of refining selections and so on. So there we go. Hope you like that. And thank you very much for watching.